Well, if you made your mittens block, then you know what that means. It's time to move on. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and I have a special block for us to work on today. But first, a real quick recap. So you have to have um, the Kimberbell Winter Volume 1 CD or direct download from the Kimberbell Vault to join us on this Winter Stash Buster pillow. So this, like I said, you can get this from the vault and there is a direct link underneath this video of how to download it uh, directly from Kimberbell. Or look through your stash. You may have bought this years ago like I did and we can use that. So it comes with a whole bunch of designs and we're doing a bunch of them for this winter pillow. So the other thing that you need is the Lucky Us pillow that is also in the vault. And that one is also a direct download. And we are going to use that not only for the Lucky Us pillow after we do this pillow, but we're gonna use it for our winter pillow. And you'll see, we're basically following the same directions. We're just changing out the designs. And it's very simple, don't worry. We're going over all of it step by step. So I have, so if you're up to date, then you will have your block so far. So the first block was the snowman with the tall hat. And we added a little challenge of doing the buttons different, the middle button at least different. That was in the video tutorial. And then our second block was the snowflake block. And I used glitter on this one. A bunch of you also did glitter. That's so fun. It's really sparkly. You can't see it very well here, I'm sure, but um, it's super pretty. And then our third block was the mittens block. And you can see I used chevron quilting from Kimberbell and I used, um, what is it called? Foam, flexifoam for underneath the mittens. That was an added challenge because then you had to um, do an extra step and like either reorder the steps or just do one of the steps twice. So I showed on the tutorial how to do that. Very simple. And then I used minky. So there's minky on the mittens and also on the cuff. So that makes it fun, something different to work with using water soluble stabilizer over the top. So all of that is in the past tutorial. So today we have a different block we're gonna work on. I'm giving you a little clue here. Do you catch it? Mmm, so good. Wanna guess? We're gonna work on a hot cocoa block today. So I don't drink coffee. Can you imagine me on coffee? <laughs> I don't do caffeine, um, but I love hot cocoa. I love it. In fact, a friend of mine came over before Christmas and we made hot cocoa bombs. Have you ever heard of hot cocoa bombs? Uh, they're like all the rage right now. So here's one of the ones that we made. We didn't make them super fancy or anything, but we made peppermint ones using um, peppermint candy melts for the outside of it. And then on the inside, we filled it with peppermint hot cocoa and marshmallows inside. We made peppermint ones, hot, regular hot cocoa ones. We made caramel ones. There's caramel. Um, and we, we made white chocolate ones. So um, different flavors. This one was just white chocolate and then we added colorful uh, marshmallows to the bag so that we could tell which ones are which and inside of it there are uh, marshmallows and um, hot cocoa so these are super fun to do if you haven't ever tried making um, hot cocoa bombs it's pretty fun and what a nice treat during the winter right whenever it's snowing or extra cold out hot cocoa just really helps so we did that I bought these um, they're two and a half inch diameter um, little spheres or whatever you call it for making the hot cocoa bombs, the shell of the hot cocoa bombs. And I'll show you. So if you get the two and a half inch, it makes this big hot cocoa bomb. And if you use the two inch, then it makes these little ones. So personal preference, whatever you like. Um, but they're really fun to make. So just a little quick tidbit. I got these on Amazon. I will add a link underneath the video of the ones that I bought because they worked really well. They're um, 
I don't know what you call it, the material that you just pop them right out. It was really easy. Um, not as easy as I thought. There were little things, but there's a whole bunch of tutorials on YouTube uh, of how to make hot cocoa bombs. So if you haven't made hot cocoa bombs and you like hot cocoa, I highly recommend it. And you got to see them um, when they open up. So you put the hot cocoa bomb in your drink and then you pour hot milk over the top and it opens up and it's just, it's really cool to see and super yummy. So, all right, back to today. Sorry, I had to. Um, so today we're going to make a uh, hot cocoa I'll show you it. Uh, I haven't made it yet. So um, this one, the hot cocoa cup, hot cocoa mug. We're going to make that today. So a couple things of what we need to do. Okay, so for um, block four, hot cocoa mug. And we are going to start the first one is our main fabric. So I've chosen this light blue. Remember I mentioned that um, the... The order that these are going to be in these are not actually going to this one number four is not going to touch uh, one two or three that we've already done so you could use one of the fabrics that you've already used if you're using different ones for your backgrounds so notice the background I did a gray snowflake and then these two touch so a uh, blue snowflake next to it and then I don't remember oh this one doesn't touch actually it comes down below and that one I did a gray with white dots and then this one, like I said, it's not going to touch. It's going to be near those four square blocks. So, and we'll do the four square blocks after we do all the embroidered blocks. So I am doing this light blue snowflake and make sure to back it with fusible stabilizer. And you're going to start with a cut size of six and a half by six and a half for, for your main fabric. All right. And then we are going to have some applique pieces. There's three applique pieces. So for the mug, I'm using this. It's the navy blue Kimberbell. Um, I think this was from Make Yourself at Home. I think that's what it's called, that home quilt. I love that one. I still haven't finished that one. All right, so for the mug, uh, you want to start with a fabric piece that is five by four. And like I mentioned, always back your applique pieces also. So five by four, and then you want an applique piece for the heart. There's a little heart on the mug. And I'm using this um, gold that I got that I thought would be really cute because keep in mind, um, I'm using fabrics that match my overall um, focal fabric so you can see these match really well so I bought this gold fabric and haven't used it and thought this is great for our stash buster challenge and then I bought this gold glitter just the other day because I didn't have any and this would have been really pretty I didn't even think of it unfortunately I just got it yesterday but how pretty is that the gold glitter vinyl from um, Kimberbell so that would be a really fun option for your heart if you wanted to use glitter vinyl that would really stand out and be cute i've already cut this and backed it so i'm pretty sure i'm going to stick with this but we'll see and then for your hot cocoa so that you can see a little bit of the hot cocoa inside of your mug and i've decided i'm going to use felt just to have a different texture so on this any brown will work. I don't have a brown Kimberbell felt. I don't know if there is one to tell you the truth, but I, so I went through my stash, stash buster challenge. I keep, if you've seen that video that I have of organizing your craft room, I have two of these bins and I use them for extra pieces of felt. One of them is all the felt pieces and then another one for vinyl pieces, small pieces. And I keep them in a baggie that's for these. I have a different organization for small pieces of fabric, but this is for my felt because I do a lot of like um, finger puppets and little felt projects for my grandkids. So pull out your brown. You can see there's a lot of brown options and I use Kimberbell felt. I've got a lot of Kimberbell felt. I didn't have a brown one though. So then I go to my other, these, I don't have all of these, but this is all of Prairie Woolens. They have a bunch of wool felt that I really, really like. And so I looked through my browns of um, my Prairie Woolen felt because you could do, I think this is the one I chose actually, yeah. So I ended up, I'm choosing this one, which is called uh, Bewitching Brown. And the reason I chose it, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it's not just brown. There's like flecks of 
black in there. It just looks milk chocolatey to me. <laughs> but you can also use a regular brown. That would work fine too. So it's a very small piece. You're not going to see a whole lot of it. So don't stress over which brown too much. But I did choose this one. So for your brown, like I said, you can use felt. You can use minky. You can use fleece. You can use um, vinyl or fabric. Use regular fabric. Anything, anything that you want. But you want to cut this to four by two. Four by two for your applique piece of the chocolate in the mug. All right. And then for our quilting. So whenever we quilt, we want to have batting. So I'm using the Project Batting by Kimberbell. And um, I'm using a piece that is five by five. And the reason is because you determine the size of the quilting. So when we have our, our final cut size of this block, we're starting with it at six and a half by six and a half, but our final cut size is four and a half by four and a half. So that tells us that we want a quilting design that's four by four, because that will fill the entire block except for a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around so that we can sew our blocks together. So four by four quilting means that we want a five by five batting piece. We'll trim it down so it won't end up being five by five, but we start with it at five by five for our batting. So on the quilting, I've decided on plaid for mine. I thought that that just looked wintry and cozy and made me think of like warm socks. <laughs> I don't know why, but I wanted plaid. I thought that would be really fun for, for the um, hot cocoa mug. So I'm doing plaid in four by four. There's a plaid two. I don't have that one yet, but um, I have plaid one. So I'm going to use plaid one, but plaid two is really cute too. Really cute. So keep that in mind. So like I mentioned on each of the videos, if you go to the Kimberbell website, you can see all of the different designs at once and, and choose from there what you think will look right with your block. So I'm doing plaid for this one. You can use any quilting design that you want. That's a size four by four. All right. Oh, and there's a geometric. That one seemed very wintry to me too. I have that one, but I'm doing plaid. So keep in mind too, that my background um, fabrics are almost all very busy. The one I did for the snowflake yesterday was just light gray with white dots. That one wasn't busy, but all the other ones that I've been using are busy. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of my quilting designs. If you're using an overall um, block, the background block designs in a nice comfy color that's not really vibrant and you're not it's not going to take away from the quilting then you really want to pay attention to your quilting and get one that will be really pretty and make sure to use a thread that stands out a little bit if you want that that's what i would do but all right so block four we are going to do um the hot cocoa mug we're going to use a five by seven hoop and in my hoop i am using the light mesh cutaway by kimberbell and i'm using the fusible backing on the back of all of my fabrics. I feel that that's very, very important. And I think that's it. Make some hot cocoa bombs. They're pretty cool. And let's go ahead and get stitching. And today I am wearing my hot chocolate sweater, of course, right? I am pretty sure this is Hoop Mama. I will add a link underneath the, the video, but it says hot chocolate and sweater weather. How perfect is that for this block? because it really is hot chocolate season, I'm telling ya. <laughs> so tell me in the comments, do you like hot chocolate? And if so, what kind do you like? I, I didn't think I'd like the peppermint and I ended up liking it a lot. I was really surprised, I liked that one a lot. Um, I like all of them. The white chocolate is a little too sweet, which is weird because I am like a big fan of sugar. <laughs> I love sweets and the white chocolate I didn't think was that great but all the other ones I love them so what kind of hot chocolate do you like
And just a quick reminder, our next project is spring showers. Our sponsor for this project for spring showers is Daylily Fabric Shop, and they have a coupon code for us. It is Kristen2022. There's no spaces, just Kristen2022. And there is a link underneath this video that goes directly to um, the order process on at the Etsy shop, and it even takes out that the discount for you. It takes out the the extra funds of that. So um, whenever possible, order from our sponsor. It helps support our group and to get our sponsorships for the projects. Did you see Kim's video showing the spring showers quilt? Oh boy, <laughs> I knew it was gonna be cute, but wow, seeing it in person and all the little embellishments and oh boy, that's really cute. So cute, I'm very excited about that one. And I know several people have been asking me about two scoops and we've already had a couple of the shops ask to sponsor us on that. And I'm working behind the scenes, uh, figuring out what will work for us and um, more on that will come soon.